How's it going? Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2016 GMC Canyon, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Automatic Battery Disconnect Switch. The Automatic Battery Disconnect Switch is something I do highly recommend whenever you're flat towing your canyon. The other five main components that you're going to need are going to be your base plate, your braking system, your tow bar, tow bar wiring, as well as safety cables. Now the reason I do highly recommend your automatic battery disconnect switch is because if you look in the owner's manual in our canyon, it is going to instruct us to disconnect from our battery every time we flat tow it down the road. Well, that could be a real hassle without your switch. And that's because you're gonna have to get your tools out, come underneath the hood, disconnect everything. Once you get to your campsite or your destination and you wanna disconnect and drive your truck, you have to come back under the hood hook your battery back up, and then you're ready to hit the road. As opposed to just using our switch, all you'd simply do is from inside the cab of our truck, hit a button, disconnects power, whenever we're ready to leave, push the button again, and we're ready to roll. To begin our installation, we're gonna be working underneath the hood here next to our battery. We're first going to disconnect both sides of our battery. So we'll take off the negative side using a 10 millimeter. We'll get that loosened up and pull off the cable. And if we open up this little lid, kind of just pry up on it. Go ahead and flip the whole thing open. What we're going to do is not only disconnect our cable from the post here, but also from this stud. Go ahead and take a 10, loosen up this nut. Pull that off, and we're going to take this one off using a 13 millimeter. Now what we're going to do is take our actual disconnect switch solenoid, and we're going to mount that right here. That way it'll be nice and close to our battery and out of the way. Now I'm going to secure it using the provided self-tapping screws. All right, now we're gonna take the wire that's labeled battery post and connect that to the short length of wire that physically goes to our battery post. And what we're gonna do is take the included heat shrink. We're gonna slide that over our wire. We're gonna take our hardware and take it all apart. We'll take our bolt and a star washer, put that on, and connect our two cables together, followed by another star washer, and finally a nut. I'll get this hand tight, and we can come back and completely snug it down. We'll go ahead, take our heat shrink, and slide that over everything. And we can use a heat source to shrink this down to keep it nice and sealed. Now we can go ahead and grab our cable that says battery cable. And what we're gonna do is bring it through this opening here and connect it to our stud. Now we'll take our battery post, slide that back over the battery itself, and tighten our nut back down. Now we're gonna have our white wire, and what we're gonna do is crimp on a ring terminal to the end of it. That way we can bring it over to the negative side of our battery. And before we connect this to our terminal, it's going to be easier to put this back on our battery and tighten it down because we're going to be connecting it to this nut. Now in our case, our ring terminal is just a little too small to easily fit over our stud there. 
So what I'm going to do is just cut a little section out. That way we can just go around that stud. Just like that. And that'll still provide us with plenty of contact. Our bundle of gray wire, this is going to have to get ran inside of the cab. So I'll go ahead and do that now and then show you the path that I took. So here's the path that I took to get inside of our cab. As you can see, the gray wire starts from up here. I just ran it along our other wiring. Down through here. And back there a little ways, there's actually a rubber grommet that has a dimple in it. And if you cut that dimple off, it gives you a real nice hole to be able to just push your wiring right through there. And here's what it looks like coming through that grommet into the cab. Now we need to find a spot to mount our switch. That way we know where to run the rest of our wiring. Now I'm gonna choose a spot somewhere in this area, I think. But what we're gonna do to verify exactly is actually just remove this panel. That way we can see what's going on behind everything. So to get this panel off, we're gonna have two seven millimeter screws here along the bottom edge. With them screws removed, then we can just take our panel and kind of work it on the sides, pulling outward, and that'll release the clips that are holding it in place. And sometimes too, your hood release will be able to pop off. If it doesn't come right off, no big deal. But sometimes it does make it a little easier if that is the case. And up a little bit higher, we're also going to have a couple of electrical connectors to disconnect. These are real easy. So on one side there will be a tab. Just push down on it and pull it away. Same thing for both of them. The spot that I've chosen will be right here in this area. And that's because we have a nice little pocket here and there's nothing around that we could accidentally damage or have to avoid. So it's a most convenient spot to put it. And if we kind of hold our panel up and eyeball it where it would be, about right here, it's gonna be out of the way yet easily accessible. But what we're gonna have to do, since this little pocket is kind of sealed off and we need our wire to drop down through here, I'm just gonna drill a small hole, allowing that wire to come through. And drop your wire through that hole that we drilled. And then kind of feed all of it through to take out pretty much all the slack. And here's what our wiring looks like once we dropped it through the hole that we drilled. Now we're going to take our panel and drill a hole in this. That way we can mount our switch in it. Now I'm going to use a stepper bit and slowly enlarge the hole, occasionally checking to make sure our switch will fit in nice and tight. Now where we're going to go is about here in the center of these two tabs, pretty much lined up with them as well. So about that size is perfect. Instead of directly connecting our switch to the panel right now, what we're gonna do is run our wire through, hook it up to the switch. That way we'll have a little more room to work. We're gonna go ahead and take the nut off of our switch. We'll thread that off. Put that over the end of our wiring. And then we can kind of eyeball the amount of wiring that we're gonna need because we're not gonna need all of this, but they're gonna give us enough to work with. We'll cut that extra off. Now there is some sheathing around our wiring. So we'll strip that back. I'm gonna be kind of careful doing this. Take your time because you don't wanna cut into the wires actually. You just wanna get that sheathing kind of knocked off. As 
just like that. It'll work. Then we can go ahead and peel back the insulation on each one of the wires inside. So with their wire strip back, we can now run them through the opening. And it doesn't matter which color wire goes to what side of the switch, as long as they're both plugged in. So that slides through. We'll tighten that set screw down using a small Phillips screwdriver. We're able to push that switch onto the panel. Take our nut. We'll just tighten this down by hand. That way it's nice and snug. With our switch completely connected, we can now reinstall our panel the opposite way that we removed it. So we'll plug in our electrical connectors. And I found it easier to actually get the hood latch connected after the panel is completely on. Now back out under the hood with everything hooked up, we can install our fuse. So we'll go ahead and lift up our dust cover there. Put that fuse in its place. And put our dust cap back on. Now we can go ahead and make sure everything is working properly. So I'm gonna ahead and put the key in the ignition. If you try to turn it forward, you can see we're not gonna have any power, no lights on anywhere. We'll come back down and hit the button. Turn the key forward now and give it a second to do its thing. And now we have complete power. Now that we verified everything is working properly, I took a little bit of time to help clean up our install look. What I did was is just use some snips to cut out an opening here. That way our battery cover will close completely. 